Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serve is a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or finding in Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Neil. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 405, y'all. <laughs> hey, happy Friday. We made it, y'all. We surely did. Be sure to leave a one, three, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. Which one is it? <laughs> One, three, four, five. They can leave four now. Here. Look, no, they can only leave a five. One, two, three, four, five, fifth. What they do with the other stars? They don't even put them down. Just keep on. This ain't for you. Exactly. Star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and our Stitcher, and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters as Black with no K. What's going on, baby? Well, um, where do we begin? Anita is back. Actually, I feel like I have a lot of music updates. Mm -hmm. Um, for y'all but anita is back she done got her masters i forgot who sent it to me um we now can go back to cleaning our houses when i tell you i cannot wait Mm -hmm. soon as i got to go what did you hear boom 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 near bring it up just play us a, a anita just to ease in for us just so the people, <laughs> I literally got my entire life. Yeah, it's just something about it. I did not realize Sweet how much it was missing. Love. It'd be the point. It'd be playing on like a random place, and I'm like, turn it off. I need it. Don't got it approved. <laughs> when I tell you, it just brought me all the joy. Yes. What's y'all favorite Anita Bob? Sweet love. Oh, that's oh my. What's that nostril? Got me calling out your name. What? I feel no shame. Do it. She's back. The queen of the quiet storm. In the pine saw. Don't forget the bleach. You just lift them toilet seats. Hey, the big queen. Who I was talking to and Somebody was like What you listening to What's new on your box I said Anita Baker Did I tell the audience About my brunch shenanigans No you don't yes. So that's something That's why I'm doing Masters So we can And leaning into the idea that what used to do it for me don't do it for me no more. Mm-hmm. I said, like, that's not like an old R&B song. Mm-hmm. You just don't do it for me no more. And so she was just really encouraging me to go out of my comfort zone. And something she's got on to me about since being in New York. She's like, you surrounded by, like, black and brown people, restaurants, you're a foodie. She's like, I ain't heard about you once going to brunch or reaching out. And she's mm-hmm. like, you know people out there. Why don't you just reach out? Yeah. So it's a few... It's a few babies, I would call them, who work with me, Gen Z. And they have been. Since they know I've been moving, it was like, Nyambi, let us take you to brunch. Let us take you to brunch. Let us do all the things. And I'm just like, mm, I'm booked. Ask me what I'm booked with. What are you doing? Watching Evil and Fantasy I. <laughs> so what I did, I finally. Sorry. Y'all hear Mabel want attention. So I finally, like, I, I, re- I relinquished. And what my therapist said was, like, when you tell folks, like, you kind of want to go out, like, you don't got to go plan mode. You literally, like, I need to get out the house. Tell me when and where. I'm ready to roll. Mm-hmm. I did that with the children. The children did not play. Do you hear me? Mm-hmm. Our brunch reservation was at 1230. We went to, I think it was called Buttermilk Channel, Channel Buttermilk or something like that. I think it was in Park Slope. Mm-hmm. Have a good little cute time, put on a little decent cute little outfit, do my thing, ready, geeky, and with them. Some of them I noticed was eating a little light, but you know, I don't like to speak on what people eat. But it's just like, normally if you go to brunch, you know, you're, you're here to eat some food, have a couple glasses, splashes, all that good stuff. And you know, they they younger, right? So they Gen Z, so I paid for it. When I was like, dang, I would have ordered more. And I was just like, <laughs> what, are you hungry? They was like, I don't spend my last money on this new Fendi bag. I was like. I'm with the wrong age group. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you just be knowing it, but I was like, child, come on. Then I was like, this is me. I'm packing my shit up. All right. Ta ta, tee tee. They was like, no, no, yums. This is just the beginning of brunch. We got to show you around. We got to show you things. This is me. Girls in my age range, we go out to brunch once a month and then we spend about two hours together. We go home and fall asleep on the couch. Like, I don't know which one they do. So I'm like, 
okay, well, what y'all got to show me? And it was like, oh, we got to go down to Dumbo. It's this rooftop bar. We can do, do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, should we get an Uber? They was like, oh, it was only down the street. And I'm like, okay, like how far? They was like, literally just keep this straight down. I was like, oh, okay. Child, we get to walk in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I said, where is it? They said, oh, it's only two miles down here. I said, ho, <laughs> bitch, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> they got that ass. I'm Woman of a particular age, size. They got that ass. And I make a particular amount of money in my account. I want to drive. I want to take an Uber. They got that ass. Because it's hot as fuck. I done had about two, three mimosas. I done had a thick ass French toast sandwich. <laughs> thick ass pieces of bacon and shit. Sweating pork. Not sweating pork. I can't be walking two miles. I don't even got my, my killer gear on. You know, when I'm in New York, I got to put Timberlands on this shit. To walk the streets. What, what yeah. I got on now is just to tiptoe off the train and then tiptoe on the train and sit down. Mm-hmm. It wasn't made for me to go to different regions of Brooklyn. At Matt's is to go into a cute little boutique and tip tap get a candle or some shit. This bitch just had me walking for about 40 minutes. I said, What's, and I said, and we ain't about to run. <laughs> so everybody bring their speed down. No, y'all be okay. So, okay, okay, okay. It'll be good. So they then took me to the the Paul Maid. Paul Maid, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Is that am I using the right word? I don't know. Door arena off the water. Green space. Then, then we done went to the Dumbo and we done went to the quintessential shot where you know it was the Brooklyn Bridge and you know the kids be taking the Instagram filters. And then mm-hmm. they took me to a rooftop bar and then we got in the rooftop bar. We was kicking it and having some drinks and we had a couple rounds and then you know I'm looking at my watch. Look. <laughs> Well, let me, wait, 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 Nayam, we got to go to it. We got to do it. I said, okay, bitches, come on. So we did that. We had a couple more drinks. And it got to the point where I was like, I'm I'm adding up in my head. I said, I had some mimosas, at least a half a bottle of champagne. Because <laughs> a few of us, so, you know, you buy a couple bottles on the table. Mm-hmm. I don't, so I guess I, I done had pork and sweated that out on the 40 minute walk. Now we done had God knows how many drinks on this rooftop bar. I said, bitch, we got to get some food again. I said, I'm thirsty. We need some water. I ain't drank no water since noon. <laughs> so then we got to get some more food, get some more water, walking around, showing us the new pop-up shop. Mind you, this is the week before New York Fashion Week, so they showing me all the things. Finally, I'm like, I'm going home because I got to get some groceries. Like, I got to do, oh, like, I got to get vegetables in my house. Like, mm-hmm. I got to do these things. And you know, the neighborhood I'm in in Brooklyn, I like to be home a little before nightfall. I ain't saying nothing doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. It ain't. But it's just the, um, I don't want to be there when the Hennessy bottles appear. Y'all know in the morning, every morning is a new Hennessy bottle. I don't want to meet the person who bring it. So I try, we have respect for each other. So when I'm outside, they ain't and vice versa. So I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I got to ease on how I do this. Here come the children. Nyambi, don't you like Trader Joe's? It's one in downtown Brooklyn. Let's just, if we just simply walk down the street, we can go do it together. And I'm like, <laughs> show me where the Trader Joe's at. <laughs> <laughs> they got your And then here they come. We never been in Trader Joe's. What do we get? So I'm getting my little shit in Trader Joe's. And who followed up behind me like little squirrels? Everything I put in the basket, what they kept doing? <laughs> Putting in the basket. Yeah, they just mirroring me. I was like, what y'all doing? What you, it look good what you gonna make, Nyan, but we gonna make it too. Can you see the recipe? I said, what? <laughs> you gonna say, bitch, ain't no recipe. recipe. I said, I'm just going off vibes. What the girl, black girl Trader Joe's? No <laughs> list, just vibes. Just vibes. I got shit at my house I'm gonna add this with. What you buying ground meat? Do you got some pasta? Look, look I done bought some dried pasta. You got a tomato at your house? Nope. What you? <laughs> so we finally did that, and we done got. And I'm getting on the train. It's getting near dark, and of course, I think one of the train lines was delayed or broke down or something. So by the time the train come, basically when the train arrived to my stop and I looked to get on, the doors open and it basically said COVID Delta. And so I said, "My God, it was so full." As soon as the doors open, I was like, the COVID. Mm-mm-mm. And so I'm like, Well, all the trains full? Up just about it was to the point where I was like, do I wait? Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> like it was that full. But a few more people got off the train and then I was like, all right, I'm gonna go in this back corner. And I'ma just face the I'ma just corner it. I'ma corner the wall, hold my purse tight, and hold my Trader Joe's and hold my breath. Oh my God. <laughs> one gotta go. Which one is it? <laughs> Your purse, Trader Joe's. <laughs> My breath. I don't know. Oh, your breath. So thank goodness, because you know where we live at, we live where they throw Hennessy bottles at. At every stop we took, more people got off. 
So I finally could breathe. Have you experienced Showtime yet? No, thank God. Oh my God. I, the Showtime, I would I would have just went to the nearest stop and just looked for Uber. Because that's also the thing. Like, I was just going to call it Uber to get home. But literally, as we were coming out of Trader Joe's, I was like, there's the train. I was like, there's your train. Now, am I going to pay two seventy five or like $40? <laughs> Two seventy five. So I got my ass. Then I seen the thing, and I was like, "Fuck!" But it was only literally for a couple seconds, and a lot of people got off. And then I finally eased on home. I left here. Well, what I say? Brunch was twelve thirty or one thirty. One of them, and I, you know, I likes to be on time, honey. So I'm leaving 30, 40 minutes early because I need to know where the fuck I'm going. You know, I like to get the brunch spots early enough where I can go to a coffee shop, get a piece of coffee, sit down, fan, make sure I ain't sweating, huffing and puffing. So I done got reapply the odor. Get the get the oil off my face, get my bearings, all of that shit. So I done been out. I don't left the house at noon. I ain't get back in the house to what? Seven o'clock. Them ain't hours you keep for brunch. <laughs> that yeah, is, is a work day. <laughs> and to the point where like they was like, Yeah, this is good as to be out. I ain't wanna go home. I don't got time for my roommate. I said, I like mine. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to both mine. <laughs> And it just wore me down. And I was just so happy that then that Sunday morning, that next day to just turn on my Anita Baker in sweet love. All that I've learned, though, what I unpacked with my therapist is that I need um, older friends. Mm -hmm. Like the children is cute, but. They don't keep you young? They keep me young, but that was an all day event for brunch. Were you surprised? What were you thinking? Yeah, I was definitely surprised. What? When I came what back you, home. I, I was said, planning oh. on being home by two two thirty. Because I three that day I had my long run anyway. Yeah. And I had something afterwards. So when I came home, you wasn't home yet. Yeah. I said, Oh. Ooh. I said, Come on, Mabel. <laughs> Your mama ain't gonna be back. What Mabel say when you came in? Yes, come get me. What you <laughs> and I just sent you a text like I'm taking the car and Mabel. That that's what I should have did. I should have just drove my car to brunch, and that way, be like, I can't walk nowhere. Mm -hmm. It ain't no parking down there, so I see y'all later. No, yeah, but we find parking. parking. We pay, we pay, we pay for parking. We barely pay for granola, let alone parking. So that's something that taught me. Um, other than that, did y'all see Steve from Blue Schools come out here for parents and people? He gonna come out here and say, "I know I left abruptly." But don't think I ain't think about you every day. Man, fuck Steve. Steve didn't laugh like a fucking He the daddy. first source of trauma. He left like a daddy who said they was going to go to the grocery store and I ain't seen this ass for 25 be right years. Back. He couldn't even come back on the holiday to tell us how college went. No. He tried to gaslight us and be like, see, I went to college. But think of all the great things you've done. Well, fuck you, Steve. You bitch ass nigga. And here you come during the pandemic. We on edge. But it did warm my heart a little bit. I was just like, damn, he that nigga did disappear and I ain't address it. Did nothing. Just like a bitch ass daddy. <laughs> At first I thought he was going to try to come do a reboot on Paramount Plus. Don't you come over here. I don't even remember the nigga they replaced him with. I wonder how much they paid him to do that. Well, you think it was paid? Yes. Or did he just do that on his own? No. That Nickelodeon? Was, that was on Nickelodeon socials. Who up there in Nickelodeon said we got to right some wrongs? I mean, they could just start with the institutional racism in their own hiring. But we could, this is good, too. It's a good start. Why? Did you snicker? Yes, I did. <laughs> well, speaking of making white people feel guilty at work, I made I did that again um, today. We were talking about different, like, diversity and equity training. You know how you just get tired of motherfuckers? Mm. And I got tired of them. I'm going to have to probably figure out how to um, reemerge that conversation. But, like, we're doing some different pra practices. You know we're in HR and we're doing some different practices. We're HR adjacent, I would say. We're working with this team that's HR adjacent. And it's more, it's not externally facing. It's more internally. And it's for the, uh, like, advancement of the day-to-day -day worker, right? Like, how are we educating ourselves? It's not about, like legal ease or anything like that like so it doesn't need that type of clarification and what i was i had to get an ass i got a little frustrated with is because y'all know when y'all at work and cubicle warriors anything with diversity and equity white people and or colonizers right they tend to want rules right mm -hmm. what are the rules what is the outline 
maybe we should provide um, managers or people who do this job with a step-by-step tutorial um, on what to do, how to move, what it looked like. Again, I'll reiterate, this is nothing like legalese, externally faced, nothing of that, right? This is literally about your journey and your understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? And so they just going back and forth and needing the rules and how can we do it and how will we expect them not to do it? And like somebody came and was like, it was like gaslighting the group and be like, we, we just want simply the rules so we can just show up and be the best allies that we can, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and something from my spirit, the readings of Baldwin, Angelou, McMillan, um, shout out to Hustle that I wrote back. Like all of the, the legendary, like just the great, I tell you about like everyone literally just came out of my spirit. And I was like, can we say a thing? Oftentimes, like, cause I, I almost had to be like the bridge because you could tell the group who were getting mad and the group was tend to be underrepresented people, all that type of stuff. I was like, what tends to happen is, especially in corporate settings, white people don't want rules for diversity and equity or a playbook for diversity and equity as a way to do right, right? As a way to do better, right? As a way to set the foundation for like their guiding principle in North Star, right? The problem is that's what they say they're doing, but that's not what they're doing. This is them. And I am what they're doing. I said, in actuality, white people, I didn't say colonizers, but y'all you know, I, I can edit it up. <laughs> colonizers, people are in this position. It tends to be that folks in this position want these rule books, playbooks, one page or step-by-steps, all these things again, not to do better for people, but to protect themselves. And that's what becomes the fucking problem. And that's why people are upset. And they were like, what, what do you mean? Protection? I'm, again, I ain't giving y'all the example I gave them, but I'll give y'all the black love matters examples. White people, colonizers want these playbooks. So they then can zoom out and be like, Hey, blacks, you gave us the playbook and you told us you was the blacks and not African-Americans. And I followed the playbook and well, the rules changed. So I don't know. No, Karen, <laughs> there is not a bullet point adjacent point to everything you do with diversity and equity. You're going to have to roll around a little bit. You're going to have to do your work. You really going to have to flesh out a little bit about that. Right. Like, and so we had like this deep conversation Mm -hmm. about that. And the whites in the room were shocked when I said it. (laughs) Was that too much? No. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I do. They mask it as if they want these outlines in these infrastructures to do better, but they don't, they just want it to protect themselves. They just want it as a form of protection. They, can, they don't give a fuck about doing better for the yeah, community. It's called CYA, Miami. Covering their ass. That's literally what it was. I was like, I'm not here to do all that. And also, we got in other stuff in unpacking, like, the themes of, like, majority people, right, compared to minority people, right? Like, I don't even know how deep I should go on this. Like, child, you know, I, I can go all day on this. But it's this idea of, like, my friends who are white, right? Like just the tokenization of like black friendship and all that. Like if I have friends who are white compared to just random white people, the di- difference are my friends who happen to be white, I know they're going to do the work regardless of me. So say if I, tomorrow, in an hour, I turn around and I am with the ancestors, I am no longer earthbound. I know the white people who I call friends in my life are still going to do the work. They're still going to fight the battle. They're still going to read the books. They're still going to call out the things they need to call on. The problem happens with the group of people who don't do the fucking work. They think their work in diversity and equity is to be my friend and not to do the fucking work. And like that is the types of understandings and systematic thought that you have to break down in corporate settings that white people are clueless about. But I don't know. I think I went too deep with them. I was like, the difference is like you, you trying to do the work because you my you for my to be my friend. I don't like that be your fucking friend. doesn't matter. I ain't say that. I don't want to be. But your like, friend. it's not about me. Like you centered around Nyambi. You centered it around your one black friend. We are talking about generations, systematic, like rooted shit. Right, right, right. And you got to be able to zoom the fuck out, and they can't. You just trying to be my friend, motherfucker, and cover your ass. Yeah, you know white people is king of the CYA. Ooh, that is, and that's nothing 
reason, uh, even out of diversity and equity, honestly, like I don't even know where that came from my spirit, but it came from my spirit. But then I got to connect the dots. Like they don't really give a fuck about rules. All the rule followers and shit. They don't give a fuck. They just want to cover their own shit. It don't matter. Mm-hmm. It ain't for the greater good. It ain't for protection. It ain't none of that. No, it's never for them. It's for them individually. It ain't even for the broader group. It's for they ass. Exactly. Ooh-wee. So I did a little bit of that. Um, shifting gears one more time to a little bit more black excellence. Have y'all seen Sukiyana video? No. It's called is the listen is the is the children here? I'm gonna give everybody a moment. No, this is the this is not for children. Is it not? Do not put Sukiyana's new video for your children, okay? The name of it is Pussy Everywhere. Oh shit. Can you hit the play? Y'all, I watched the video two times with my mouth open. That's it. Come on, Suki. What? Jesus. Here, you see all this? Look at the video, y'all. They swiping credit cards. There's booty. There's white booty. There's black booty. There's titties. There's, um... Red hair. Hey. There's fur coats. It's pee popping. It's it's BBLs. It's licking nipples. It's, uh, it's uh, cry babies. It's what? It's big girls. It's little girls. It's medium girls. It's small facts. Hey. It's big facts. Hey. It, it, it's, hey. It's, it's, Everywhere. Everywhere. I, I just Everywhere. I don't know how I stumbled on this side of YouTube. Hey, they eat pussy. They eating thing. coochie on the video. Is that a booty? Is that a tongue in the booty? They doing trick daddy special on here. Suck your stomach in. Uh, is that fake? Is they pretending or is this a real video? No. Look. Oh my god! They are bumping coochies. They are fucking. What yeah. am I watching? <laughs> hey, they bumping clits in here. Oh my god! What? I pause me. It's enough. <laughs> my god! For anybody who want to know, they said I wasn't ready. Little Nas <laughs> don't got shit. Can y'all remind me that's why y'all was mad at Lil Nas X? They was bumping clips in there. Wait, is it Lil Nas X don't got nothing on her? She don't got nothing on Lil Nas X. She ain't got nothing on Lil Nas X. <laughs> Sukiyana! Come here! I can't even get mad. I stumbled they can't on even this. Play this on YouTube. I stumbled on it's this. too many. This it's beach, only, well, it couldn't have been on YouTube. You're going to have to go on Twitter, y'all. Oh my it's God. It's Sukiyana. S U K I. H A N A pussy everywhere. Yes, the girl from Love and Hip Hop Miami. I ain't never seen no shit like this. The t- Outside the, of Pornhub. The com- the comments. How the fuck you find this many bitches to eat coochie? Is it COVID? I can't even find one did, bitch to bump coochies with. Did, did they do COVID testing? <laughs> did they do the STD testing? <laughs> did they do the um hepatitis testing? No. They went straight for eating coochie. Did we did we do the halitosis testing? No. They just went straight to eating y'all, coochie. Y'all. Y'all. Why didn't y'all tell me this was gonna happen? Because I see their name. I was like, oh, that's Sukiana from um mm-hmm. Love and Hip Hop Miami. Mm-hmm. Let let me support sis. And then at first I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, me thinking I'm an older millennial. I was like, child, this ain't nothing. I done seen tip drill. Listen, Sukiana. <laughs> that made Tidra look like um, Barney and Friends. Do you hear me? It did. Listen. <laughs> look at everybody at me. Listen. <laughs> if you watch Sukiana Pussy Everywhere, do it incognito. <laughs> don't do it on your work computer. <laughs> don't, do, don't do it on your work computer. <laughs> You're getting don't fired. Do it on your work computer. <laughs> You're getting fired. He gonna fuck up your job. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna be the spl- As you just send this, send this to your manager. Tell this podcast, be like, now I'm be made a mistake, and then talk about white supremacy. 
<laughs> Y'all, I thought Tip Drill was something. Tri- Tip Drill was the precursor. <laughs> Tip was. Drill is rated PG what? 13. <laughs> yes. Compared to what the fuck I just seen. <laughs> <laughs> Little Nas, who? <laughs> Did you know about this now? I didn't. And honestly, I'm a sucker for Sukiyana anyway, but I'm a sucker for her from just loving hip hop, um, Miami. Just the way she be owning her shit mm-hmm. is just, you know. I told you, most powerful people in the room was wants no secrets. So the way she just come out in the first ninety seconds, tell you everything about her, you don't, you be like, well, that's it. It's just. You don't need Netflix and chill. No. How long is the video now? It felt like it was two hours. And it's only two, two minutes and 19 seconds. And I can't look away. Between the titties. The ass. The ass. The, 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 the eating of everything. Eating the ass and I do pussy. like the body inclusivity here. Everybody. Big ones, little, little ones. ones. Light ones, dark ones. Yes. Ones shaped up like hourglasses. Shaped up like bananas, boxes, square. Everybody. They upside down. Everybody. They they right side up. up. <laughs> they, they on the sideways. <laughs> some of them got on draw. Some of them don't. Some of them getting their ass ate. Some of them getting their pussy lit. But this don't look fake. Is no. this real? These motherfuckers. Like, they, like, did they have like an orgy here? They and they recorded like, it. Look. She should have sold this for free. <laughs> this should have cost money. This should have been behind a paywall. <laughs> should have. She could at least got a dollar of you. <laughs> That's what Auntie Nayambi would have told her. Because you know, I don't kink shame. No. I don't mind a sex worker. But get your money, sis. They are bumping. We don't we don't get this for free. They are bumping coochies. Child, they are licking coochies. I'm not even going by my with my robe in front of the window for free. They're gonna have to pay for that. And it only one nigga in here. Maybe two. <laughs> Just the pool boy. And and he's not the best looker by normative standards. No, it's the other one. You see oh. him, he's shocked too. It's like the men in the video just as shocked as what's happening. <laughs> oh, look at that alabaster ass. <laughs> That's why it's like she was translucent. <laughs> Y'all. Oh, if shit. you need to spice up your Netflix and chill, guess what you do? You put on your, like, oh, let's watch Netflix and chill. Let's watch Corolla on Disney+. Plus. Then go ahead and connect your phone to the um Twitter, the, the, your, your, um to the TV, and your man or your woman, because whoever look at this going to get something. Mm. There's something in here for everybody. And you go ahead and hit the button hit play. <sighs> this is a work of art. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it did is like everybody else, it really <laughs> fucked me up. Like, I didn't know it was going there. <laughs> Even with the title of Pussy Everywhere, I thought, and honestly, I just thought it was the unedited version. I thought they were just going to be popping some booties at the, the pool. Ooh, I'm cute. You know, maybe give us a little nice Miami bop or some type of dance. You know what I'm saying? Give us a little Haitian influence or something. You know what I'm saying? I thought we were going to do a little dance. Mm-mm. little, You know, it's carnival maybe. Give us some outfits. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought they was going to give us. But then, what the way it happens, y'all, you have to watch it. Is first they just give you a flick of a titty. Yes. You be like, what was that? You be like, is that a nipple? You be like, was that a nipple or a raccoon? <laughs> and you be like, what did you do? <laughs> Not a nipple or a raccoon. <laughs> you be like, so you actually got raccoons in this video. <laughs> what is that? And then you just see all the ass <laughs> bouncing. Then it came back and like, oh, okay, uh-huh. they just dancing. Like, I'm true. Yeah, well, maybe like, I. Cool. I'm horny well look, maybe that wasn't no t- that was a raccoon and i done seen something i ain't supposed to see and okay. then and then uh and then they last then, longer no. <laughs> then, like each time it, it lasts it's on so the on the titty a little I'm, bit longer and, and the, the next thing you know escalates. <laughs> and the next thing you know <laughs> somebody getting their ass <laughs> it all upside right down now. it's like what did you see it's the tongue and when the salt hit the tongue exactly and the next thing you know go from ass to you, somebody getting full on cunnilingus. <laughs> what is it called? There? Cunnilingus. <laughs> <laughs> What's that documentary? <laughs> Sukiana. <laughs> That's a lot, sis. But I guess every pot got a lid. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe this one for me. And then they start bumping coochies. <laughs> I said, what is this? I've been so fucked up that I, I can't even hear the words of the song. 
Because it only goes pussy, 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 pussy everywhere. Where was she thinking she going to sell this at? I don't know. Like at on the, the strip underground club. market? This is, this is. Um, but how does she make money off that? Is she making money off like appearances? Appearances, strip clubs. It's COVID. Mm. Niggas going to the Yeah, like I said, it's just been a minute since something has caught me off guard on the line. Shit, these views. It's and already 1.3 million. It does, because the thing is, when you watch it, you know sometimes you see some shit be like, oh, this is like too much. I'm not watching this. And you just push away. This video, I guarantee you're going to watch it at least once. Because <laughs> you're not going to be able to look away. And it happens so fast. <laughs> and at the end, you just, you ever just have a good movie you watch and you just got to sit there? That's how this is. You'll be like, what the... Go check it out. For anybody who want to know what to look forward to. <laughs> and I wasn't ready. <laughs> Y'all just go look at this. Go on Twitter. It ain't on YouTube. YouTube has sent the community guidelines police, and I'm sure shut that down within yes. 90 seconds. They probably shut it down before the whole, someone could watch the entire video. Yeah. You can't find it nowhere. No. The only thing on YouTube you maybe can watch is like people's reactions. Shout out to reaction video. Like that's how intense it is where people are like, we need to do a reaction video. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Shout out to her. Um, if that's your thing, if you're looking for a way to spice up what's to Friday night, I recommend Sukiana's. Um, where do I even go from now? I was gonna talk about love and hip hop Huntsville, but that feels abrupt. <laughs> Did you watch Love and Hip Hop Huntsville? No, I didn't. Okay, well, we'll uh, not Love and Hip Hop Huntsville. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Lo- what is it called? <laughs> love, love and, and Marriage. marriage. <laughs> I got thoughts on Love and um, Marriage Huntsville. Um, shout out to Wanda. I love Wanda. Tisha Mama. I can't go. Ooh, she is exactly. Carlos King knew what the fuck he was doing when he made Wanda. I can tell how messy. <laughs> The, I can tell how messy Wanda gonna be based on her hairstyle. The more spritz she got in her hair. Oh my god! Listen, not the more. The, the more spritz, not spray, spritz. Not Y'all remember spritz? Not the gorilla hold. That make you hold the the spr- Yeah. That make it. Can y'all hear? Yes, they can hear that. That better. make your hair. That's mm-hmm. how I know Wanda gonna play. And Wanda them finally got Kimmy. The ultimate fence toter mad. You know I don't like fence toters. Everybody love Kimmy. I like Kimmy too, but she is a fence toter. Her and her son is a fence toter. They the type of like, how do you tell me I never? I'm like, oh, bitch, you know what I mean. <laughs> but she done got the fence toter mad. Mm-mm-mm. And Wanda done went and told Melanie he need, she need to go ahead and be with Martell ass. And that's toxic. Melody did read her to be like, because old women like y'all tell them to stay with these toxic ass marriage. And here come Wanda. Well, shit, you put up with it for five years. I said, oh my God. Pussy, 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 pussy everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love. I might have to put that on the soundboard. To unpack love and hip hop Huntsville. Near him almost, he got mad at me too. Because I was like, Wanda trying, I mean, um, Miss Wanda trying to get herself a possum. <laughs> You know, you know how, uh, what is it called? Real Housewives of Atlanta and stuff. They got a peach. They got a peach. I don't know what they got in Huntsville. I said some possums. So they just hold up little baby possums <laughs> instead of peaches. <laughs> what is Huntsville known for? I don't know. Possums. What? I don't know. It, one day, Dane, 30 acres and a mule or some shit. I like don't that. know oh, what that shit was. What was it called? <laughs> get, get Rich and Die Club. What was it called? <laughs> get Rich and Die Club. <laughs> the <laughs> Comeback <laughs> Group. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fifty. What does it get rich and die? <laughs> no, let me stop. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Kimmy, Wanda, I love y'all all. I do get joy from watching their show, so I'm just teasing. It's all jokes. Nam, you got some updates. <sighs> This is a hard one. This is a hard one. Take a love, baby. Let's 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 take a love,
We had two of them. I know. One of them I forgot last episode, so I had oh. to bring it aside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. So we got Greg Leaks. Greg Leaks. He done went on to the ancestors. He done went on to the ancestors. We know we love Greek. Mm-hmm. Greg. You know, my favorite thing was when on the reunion show when Nene was like, toot the horn, baby. Toot, toot. Come on, Greg. We Greg got Greg. was just a signature Southern black old man mm-hmm. that did love Lanethia Sleeps. Yeah, he did. With all but, his heart. But that is sad. So young. That cancer ain't nothing to play with. Yeah. We'll be taking down the Nene and Grids. Peach Cobbler. Know. You think Peach Cobbler? I'm going to take a Peach Cobbler. Yeah. I was thinking about getting something shipped. Okay. Because, you know, Nene a little funny. Okay. Um, so I don't know if she trusts my cooking. But, yeah, we can do a Peach Cobbler. We ain't got, we ain't got to make it. Oh, okay. Who we know? Who ship cobblers? Hey. What in the? That must be the white version of the cobbler. <laughs> Somebody should. You know like the black it. version got juice in it. Yeah. You know the white people. I don't have white people peach cobbler. Where it's like a dump cake. Like I'm like the peaches just in cake. <laughs> I was like, this is not a cup cobbler. <laughs> Focus. All right. Who else don't want to? And dance then we got Michael K. White. <sighs> that one hurt. Listen, not that, that Greg didn't, right? But we knew Greg was, you know, battling that cancer. Battling that cancer. He was putting in the work. Uh-huh. He was spending time with his family. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was a little different. Death is death, but it was a little different. But this just a re a remembering that how that death angel don't discriminate Mm-mm. and will come up on you. Because I, again, I don't know Michael K. White, but I'm sure he had no intention on going, visit, going to the ancestors. Mm-mm. No intention. What you got to say now? I don't know. I, you know, it, it's hard. What we, it, it's what, hard. What we bring to the fume first? Put respect. Uh, what's a Brooklyn staple? Oh, what they be liking them? I don't know. I'm about to go go to like Brooklyn pies or something. Yeah, like a, a pizza or some shit. I don't I know. Dog or Brooklyn, I, I don't know what y'all signature is. I know what I am looking for. Brooklyn, a chopped cheese, and I'm mm-hmm. going to go to Harlem and get that. Let's just bring a little piece of pizza. Yeah. Actually, no. Let's do some like what's Indian influence. Let's bring a um a platter of oxtails, rice and peas, mm. and some patties. Okay. Um, for everybody in the family, and some cabbage, just in case we get some vegetarians. Cool. Not no cabbage. Let's do that. Let's do. Let's do Jamaican. I, I you know, I, it's it's hard. It's yeah. it's one of these things where people are. I want to say dropping like flowers, but we're going through this pandemic. We already are losing a lot of people to pandemic, and a lot of people are grieving. A lot of people mm-hmm. are going through things. They're self soothing, and they are self soothing. And the thing about self soothing in this age right now is fentanyl is a hell of a motherfucker, and they putting fentanyl in every fucking thing. They're lacing a lot of people are lacing, and lacing and not telling people. And a lot of people don't know the fentanyl is in their shit. You know, back in the day. They'll, they'll tell you, they'll ask you, you want option B or option C? Now they just be like, oh, this is my shit. This is my special blend. And you don't know what the fuck is in that blend. You have to be careful. And, you know, I think one of the things that's, that's disheartening is that, you know, they call it a drug overdose. But I wouldn't even call it an overdose because I, I don't think none of these motherfuckers or none of these people are asking for fentanyl. Yes. They're asking for their drug of choice. And, something and, else and it just so happened that they've been poisoned with some fentanyl. And the thing is, fentanyl it only takes such a little amount. Yeah, it takes it so much of a small, like literally drops, like mm-hmm. not drops, or like powder, like yeah, like crumbs. So, yes, crumbs. <laughs> like literally, like a bread crumb. Yeah, and it, it'll take your ass out. So I think that's one of the things is that you know a lot of people are self soothing, a lot of people are going through things. And I, I think that's the one thing that just hit. Like, it was just so unexpected. And, you know, prayers to his family. You know, prayers to all his fans. But I think this is a thing that. It's a broader conversation. It's a broader yeah. conversation to, for all our people, right? Mm-hmm. All our people who we've all lost to a quote unquote drug um, mm-hmm. overdose, but it had fentanyl in it. So is that really an overdose, overdose or is that a poison? Yeah, like because you could just get some weed and people can lace it with that. Mm-hmm. And they putting you. it in everything. And you could that could kill you. Like, and I'm assuming people who getting weed ain't expecting to die from no. it. No. Yeah. So uh, you know, for all my people out there who are um, partaking regular regularationally, make sure you know your supplier. Honey. Not even know your suppliers. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all might need to start getting some fentanyl strips. Y'all oh, might need to y'all might need to start testing y'all shit. 
Nearing, but come on, Eastside Detroit. Come on, tell me more. No, I'm for real. Like, yeah. you can get some fentanyl testing strips on Amazon. Yep. Places are giving it out for free because it's, it's, it's rampant. It's, it's such of a, a rampant thing. And, like, you That's, know, that is, you, I think, me, I'm talking about, you was like, you was like no, listen, no. everything, you don't trust anyone. You test your shit. You, everything. You test your shit. That's true. Like, if you're going to partake, partake, but sure. I, I, I think In it's everything. I think, I think all of it. I yeah. think we're in the age now where you got to trust no one mm-hmm. because you don't know where they're getting from. They might trust somebody. You don't and, know where they're getting it from. And they don't get it from, from either. Mm-hmm. And I think now's the time and we're in the age where, you know, you got to be confident in your shit. If you're going to partake, you need to you need to test your shit because mm-hmm. we want you around. We don't want you to get caught up by this fentanyl shit. Yeah. Because they putting it in everything and niggas not knowing what the fuck they're putting it in. Did it come out that that was some history, or they just assuming that's what they're they're that's what they're assuming, assuming that it was a gotcha. you know um, they they're they you know they're saying there was some some things on his kitchen table and yada yada gotcha. yada. Okay. And you know just how 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 soon has it happened? For it to be uh, so. quickly. Yeah. And for him to not have any other what's the name. Uh-huh. You can only assume that it's, or anything else. it's fentanyl. <sighs> yeah, that was a hard one. Yeah, but that's a word now. If mm-hmm. you don't partake, look, because yes. I said like, what you say, you ain't practicing I'm accidents. Not, <laughs> You're not preaching that. Listen, don't do mm-hmm. it. But if you're doing it, you need to. Look, make sure if you, you got to do what you got to do, but yeah. you test your shit. Yeah, because yeah. like people are people are dropping because mm-hmm. even. DMX, mm-hmm. like they mentioned fentanyl in there. Anybody you can hear of, like as of late, hell, yeah. you can go even further. MJ, yep, Prince, mm-hmm. like this fentanyl is taking, it's it's taking, it's taking our heroes. It's mm-hmm. it's taking, it's taking our family. It's taking our friends, and yep. you just don't know it's. You don't even know it's in there. Yeah, until and you ain't asked for it. And I think that's the fucked up part. <sighs> but he was a great actor. He mm-hmm. did so many things. Like so, you know, I know everybody talked about Omar, but he was in Lovecraft Country. Like it was just it's so many, so many more that I can't even go through. And I think you know, there's actually an article that just came out um that I was reading and he was talking about how the the role after him playing in Lovecraft is like one of the reasons that he relapsed. Because of like so all of the trauma it was a that hard, you had to portray yeah. to go through, and you know he's talking about how he's going to therapy and things of that sort, and you know he mentioned that you know um, when it comes to like roles and have like sex scenes, yeah. like they have a like um, a coach or somebody there to like coach, yeah, to 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 work through that, right? Yes. And you know he was mentioning like there should be some type of trauma coach. That's true. To like deal with some of these things that they scenes, have to portray and go through. You just can't snap out of it. No. You there for a minute. Or how do you help someone? How do you then have someone after you come off that scene, they should immediately go and help them transition off of it? Mm-hmm. Because some actors like be so immersed in their role that they can't come out. Yeah. 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 Mm. And I think that, you know, that was a, that was a thing. Right. And we, we talked about how amazing that series was and how we want more of it. But we don't understand the emotional pull. Yeah, the ramifications that come from or the ramifications of that on these people who have to go act and portray it. Yeah. Send a little thoughts, thinking about it. Yeah. What else you got, Other than that, like, you know, and, you know, we, me and I always been talking about this is that, you know, I'm, I'm starting to look forward to a vacation. Uh, we've been doing a lot, um, and, you know, and I think we're going to talk more about that, like, you know, our transition to New York, but it, it's, it's definitely has been a lot. And I think one of the things that I, I'm definitely yearning for is a vacation, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm just starting to feel tired. I think I'm starting to even feel like, even though I'm doing a lot of stuff and I'm out, just like needing something to like recharge the batteries. Yeah. And like, that's something that. Not only you know, I'm putting out there in the world for myself, but I think I'm putting it out in the world for everybody else as well. Is that like, hey, we still in this motherfucking pandemic. Yeah. We still going through a lot of shit. Yeah. Motherfuckers still catching it. A lot of motherfuckers uh, ain't getting the vaccine. Mm-hmm. They getting going out and not like. 
And yeah. like we, we gonna be in this motherfucker for a minute. And I think, you know, this is a time that we need to make sure that we are doing the things that we need to do for, like, self-care. Not only self-care, but also self-love, right? And it, I think this is something that even for myself, right, like, I've been telling Naomi this past couple of days that, like, my shoulder has been hurting. It's like, I'm going to go get a massage. And, like, me being like, all right, like, I'm going to do this shit. Yeah. I'm going to put this on the business account because it's a business expense, something. Because, uh. You just gotta start taking care of yourself because it's not your body's gonna tell you. You gonna start breaking Shut down. down. Yeah. Yeah. And then the lastly is that I don't know if y'all hear the acoustics. It's starting to sound better. It's trying to I get think we're we we trying to get there. You know, I got these sound panels. I done bought some of these damn sound panels from fucking Amazon. Mm-hmm. They got this damn badass chemical smell in here. I done rinsed these motherfuckers out and sprayed it down with baking soda, vinegar, everything for breeze. It just absorbed. It just oh my god, this chemical is so damn bad. I'm about we about to fucking faint here. Like it went away, and then it come back. It come back. It's like it eats the vinegar baking soda. Like fuck that vinegar and baking soda. (laughs) So much so that I I gotta return those panels. Yeah, okay. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get them back in the box because they come like vacuum sealed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to get it back in there, but I'm going to duct tape them bitches and I'm going to put them bitches in the box and I'm going to say good written. Yeah. So we're trying to get the acoustics right. I think this episode it's sounds a little better. bit better yeah. because we have like some of the like soundproofing phones. Oh, yeah. But this shit trying to kill us. Yes. I'm about to pass out in yeah, this damn room. Like, and I was like, and you don't be talking about me lighting <laughs> candles. So this, my candle ain't done. <laughs> I'm like, you light candles, Naomi. I die. I said, come with these sound panels. It's killing us. <laughs> Goodness. That yeah. threw me off my energy. Should we just do our shout out Friday and wrap it up? Yeah, we can. Yeah, it's it's been a lot. It is. It is. It's been a lot. I know so. folks have been sending us a lot of questions. So they want to know more how we're adjusting to Monday. And I know we have a couple questions in our inbox. So what we'll do, we'll probably have um Monday's episode is just like answering all the questions. So it'll be like ask Niram and Ayambi. Mm-hmm. So for folks who are listening, if y'all got any random questions, y'all can DM, DM it to us. You can send it to our Gmail. Um and we'll just literally go through and ask yeah. uh, answer all the questions. I've been gathering a few questions y'all have been wanting to know from us and we just haven't had it. So we'll have like we'll just have a kitchen table talk episode yeah. on Monday. All right, we got some uh, Apple Podcast reviews. Yeah, so it says Prayer Hands, Black Prayer Hands, Black Prayer Hands by JT73. And it says, keep doing God's work, you two. I'm glad y'all are back. Oh, is this another one? Um, Yeah, glad y'all are back. And it says, search for the drive-in in in New York, New Jersey area, and hopefully they have respect. Um, Then it says, where are y'all? By UHFD, it says, we miss (laughs) y'all. Thank you. Should I read the last one? Yeah. It says, then last one we got is Love Y'all by um, I Love Tank. And it says, hey, fam, I was thinking of y'all during a storm. So glad to hear you're safe. Y'all promise me when y'all get pregnant to get black, uh, get a black midwife and doula. Keep um, up the good work. Love y'all, Kiki. Yes, I am going to get all of them. I'm going to have a small black village. Oh. Don't you worry. I'm a particular age. I don't know if I'll be able to have um, like a home birth which is what i kind of want i'm a little too old for that they're gonna probably take me to the hospital but we gonna whatever hospital i'm at mm-hmm. you're gonna walk in and it's gonna smell like black Put excellence you. the shea butter the ancestors not shea butter and the anita gonna be on the background lights will be dimmed all the things will be happening i will be getting cbd salve rubbed on me all the things will be happening oh my god are you excited can I get something rubbed on me too? I, no, it's not about you, Nero. Mm. We also overdue for a horoscope episode. Did we ever figure out what your moon is? No. <sighs> Jesus. Y'all know Nero's a cancer. I'm a um, Leo sun cancer moon. So we be a lot. I got a lot of Leo, Virgo, and cancer in my birth chart. So I don't know what none of that means. Okay. Voicemails, Nero. <laughs> don't know what none of that means. None of that means. I don't. Okay, hit it. Cubicle warrior. Hey. First of all, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. I was kind of nervous a little bit. I wasn't <laughs> sure y'all was uh, coming back. Oh, well, Just, what's going on? We did Bernie anyway, Mac. We anyway, took a break. First of all, Nyambi. Yes. I got a bone to pick with you. Okay. I ain't even finished listening to episode 401. Yeah. And I'm like, you going in oh. on us New York people. Don't <laughs> do that. Okay. Don't do that. You talking about. How dirty it is. We know it it's is dirty. dirty. It is That's dirty. Why walk around. With the That's why we walking around with uh Tim <laughs> on every every season. 
spring, I summer, fall, winter, all we got Tim's on because it's dirty. We know that. And people do sweep their stoop, all right? <laughs> people be sweeping it all day, every day. And when you say Brooklyn, you can't just say Brooklyn, okay? We in Brooklyn. You got to say we in Brooklyn. 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 Okay? <laughs> Brooklyn. <is>. Practice it. <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> But I love my city. Yeah. Uh, y'all gonna have a ball regardless. Of Nyambi, you you might I don't know. You you sound a little a little spoiled, a little <laughs> prissy. I don't know. New York might be a little too gutter for you. It might be. But I mean, that's what that's what made us. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's, it's well, people, glad y'all are back. Yeah. Okay. Give my city some time. I promise well, you you gonna well, like it. You are gonna hate it in winter time. Um, yeah. But anyway, have fun, y'all. <laughs> Brooklyn. That's my that's my born and raised. Yeah, all right. right. See y'all. That's the Hennessy glass. Not the Hennessy I glass. Ain't never glass. Glasses. <laughs> Just the glass. We stop breaking bottles. <laughs> like it's trash cans everywhere. Look, that's why I'm able to walk around booties now. Booties now, because the first one's because it's dirty, but it's so much glass. Stop breaking, busting glasses. Right. I don't know if it's the niggas or the um, the Mexicans. The niggas be the niggas be having the Hennessy, and then what's the the, the um the beer that's real popular in Mexico? Ticati? I don't know what it is, or, but uh, I was like, is it us? Who corona. is it? I feel like I can figure out who it is. Was it you? <laughs> be looking across the street. I know it was you, Javier. I see you. It's oh she calling again. I haven't called in a while. Hey. I got that COVID, y'all. Oh, I didn't get the shot. Okay. Now I got COVID, ended up with pneumonia, okay. but that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling because I got to go back to work, but I'm still sick. still sick, and they're basically like, you got to come back now, or you have to take a medical leave, and I also got a new job offer starting in September, but with all of this going on, it made me kind of be like a little bit yeah. hesitant to go. The new job, more money, yeah, uh, opportunity you. for more money okay. with the tech company. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I just want some advice on while I'm sick, should I just put off starting on a new job or should I just, you know, go for it and hope that, you know, in another week I'll be ready. I've been sick since the 11th. Um, yeah. Let me know what y'all think and pray for me. Yeah. Bye. Pray for you, sis. So sorry yeah. to hear that you got sick. Um, and I'm glad that you on the, um. You on the up and up on the recovery. So that's it. I don't know if you've already started yet, especially if it's a tech company. I would just let them know. Yeah. Right. Like, I, I would take the time to heal. Right. Like, make sure you take the time to heal. Also, you know, make sure you're not contagious. I'm sure you already did your due diligence mm-hmm. and like make sure you're you're testing negative and all that. But most companies, especially tech companies, they're given anywhere between two weeks to a month. Right. Like just alone. Um, if you just mentioned the word COVID. COVID so yeah. like, and I don't even mean that as a shady word. I mean, it is like, as an HR cubicle warrior, we'd be like, please go do better. Like mm-hmm. go take mm-hmm. care of yourself, go get better. Because we know what happens where like when people are in like in your in-between spot where of course you're, you're not testing positive for COVID or anything, but you're still dealing, dealing with the residuals. And shit. Yeah. Right. And then what happens is you jump into work, then your immune system goes down. Then you got to go out again. Like that's the stuff where we're realizing if you just get people time to heal, they can come back strong. And I would say in the space and time, especially again, as you're shifting companies, I think you probably can already tell the difference in energy and tech that if you just upfront with your manager and stuff like that, especially if you have to go in in person, again, I know you did your due diligence. I know you'll be negative, but honestly, people still be nervous. They're like, what you sneezing for? What you cough? What you breathing? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that would just make even like your peers just feel more comfortable. But if I had to speak, you know, for broader tech, it is not a... Um, taboo to say i am feeling ill or i have had covid and i'm recovering i need more time yeah a lot of these companies i would even argue that the new tech company you work to have leads that specific for um covid too Big facts. so that's what i would say and fuck that other company yeah they fuck tried. them niggas what you come to work anyway what in go to work or go on medical leave or fuck i'm going on medical, medical leave. leave yeah because the thing is they want to they're going to fmla so i don't got to pay nothing mm-hmm. um but there should be more due diligence. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There should be more due diligence. And usually tech is, um, well, from what I've seen, um, is a lot more open. Yeah, unless you work for the it. Tesla or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, never mind. Let me be quiet.
it. Yeah. I might have to ease over there one day. <laughs> Nothing. What up, Miriam <laughs> Nayami? Okay, let me tell you about this um, street parking in New York. Yes. It's a nuisance. Okay. To have a vehicle in New York it is, is a more than a hassle than it is a luxury, okay? <laughs> um, you guys got to get familiar and friendly with um, <laughs> walking yes. and the train, yes. okay? That is going to be your best bet. And if you don't want to be on the train with this virus, y'all going to be taxiing or Ubering where y'all need to go, mm-hmm. right? My husband on that city this bike. This opposite I'm street gonna parking, y'all going to hate it. It's My friends in the past, they just paid for their vehicles to be in a parking deck because mm-hmm. being in um, the street parking where you get dressed in the morning, you got to move the car. Yeah. It's such a hassle and it's so annoying yeah. that they don't even want to deal with it. And that can run you seven, mm-hmm. $800 a month. Yeah. The insurance in New York is high as fuck. Yep. So it's better if y'all leave y'all car be. at y'all parents' house. Yeah, and then just be in New York uh, by train because it don't make no sense. Yes, uh, I didn't get my car until I moved to Atlanta on purpose. <laughs> yeah, actually, we had Niam was like, "No, no, my they they the coming. The boys is coming. It came. They came, but we. Didn't get but the thing is, something something's going on. Like maybe I'm missing something. I need to do more research because ain't no not one car was gone. Like, ain't nobody on the side of the street where the cleaning crew was coming at yep. was gone. Nope. So I don't know if there, like, there's a pause on alternate side street parking. I think we got a little bit of a um, relax because of the hurricane, though. And I think people still cleaning up from the hurricane. I think that's what it happened. Because I think it's it's confusing because. But that showed me they come through For the, the first three weeks, I was in the fucking car for an hour and a half with yeah. my phone. Nero wasn't playing. Because I ain't trying to get these tickets. But on the fourth week. I ain't seen not one cleaning crew, no nothing. Mm-mm. Now I'm over here relaxing. Here comes Nyambi. Nyam! They coming! They coming, coming Nyam! My gosh. Yes. So I don't know if they're like giving out tickets. Uh, I just don't know. So I think I need to do more research on it. Yeah. Uh, especially, um, allegedly, they sort of come on our, on our blocks Thursdays and Fridays. Mm-hmm. So I'm just a little confused on like what, what to do. So that's what's going on. Sharon says there's only a voicemail. Okay. Oh my God. So I'm butt naked in the shower. Pussy everywhere. Listening to <laughs> this other podcast talk about, you know, the people affected by this hurricane in Louisiana. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Didn't this um, motherfucking hurricane do a Yui, bust a Yui? And went up top Broke an ankle. to New York. Yes. Who was freshly in New York? My uh, people. Struggle. Nam and Naomi, how did struggling. I not check in? Struggle. Are y'all okay? We hanging in there. It Are lied. y'all okay? They tried I know, And then I, something told me, I said, wait. I didn't see episodes for them from Wednesday. Yes. I didn't even get a Friday episode. Oh, shit. Yes. They must have been affected by this hurricane. Yep. What's going on? <laughs> this is, this is, can be for the show or this does not have to be for the show. <laughs> That's how it was delayed. Now we get our stuff together. Do an SOS. Yes. Um, DM something <laughs> to let me know that y'all are okay. Like, what's going on? Oh, Lord. I know y'all freshly there and this shit happened, which is a shit it's show. It's bullshit. City. Two hurricanes. I checked off to be my a friends. Mm-hmm. Um, what they weren't in the city at the time. They're other places of New York. Yeah. So they're not that affected, but shit. Yes. Let me know. This is Shan. Y'all already yeah. know. Like, I'm just like, God, girl, we got naked, but we need to call them right now. I told you, it ain't no. Okay? It's Are not a plane. What's going on? It's not hitting. I think the next ones they're looking at, I don't know if it's coming to New York, but the next hurricane we got coming down the street is Mindy. I was like, do we get a hurricane every week? Is that what it is? Is that they got two of them on going? What they happened got, to uh, JK Ellen? They said uh, Mindy coming, and then also they got Larry coming from Bermuda. Oh my God. So we'll see. They got Hurricane Olaf in Mexico, Los Cabos. These my, hurricanes ain't playing. Mm-mm. 
And my homeboy talking about he ready. I said, nigga, now nah, not the good time. Come Listen, out. if he come, we tell him we're going to be in the house. Everybody going to get a candle. <laughs> you look, come at the El Nino. <laughs> Shout out to El Nino. <laughs> Shout out to the millennials. Remember El Nino? <laughs> It was like El Nino for 10 years. I know. What, what? was that? What the hell is El Nino? Y'all remember El Nino? Yes. Wherever I think it's is. like a... Don't give me the line. Here we go. An irregularly occurring and complex series of climatic changes affecting the equatorial Pacific region and beyond every few years, characterized by the appearance of unusually warm, nutrient-poor waters off northern Peru, Ecuador, typically in late December. We in El Nino. <laughs> we in something. El Nino. Yes. Do you remember that in the 2000s? Yes. Where like every time something happened, it was like, well, El Nino. Yeah, we all in El Nino. El Nino. And I'm like. The fuck does that? And I feel like it took over some months. Like yes. I feel like it was in the winter. That's when we learned about Thunder Snow. Mm-hmm. Shout out to. No, that was a different era. Remember Thunder Snow? Yes, I do. And. Uh, Bombo right Genesis. Ass, well, Bombo Genesis. In um, what was in white ass New England? Mm-hmm. I was like, I've been in Michigan a long time, and I ain't never seen no Bombo Genesis. Right, and then moved to fucking California, and now they got th- dry thunderstorms. Dry thunderstorms. The fuck is that? And it's fire. <laughs> it's just lightning. It's just lightning, lightning. in the air. It's just cracking them trees. <laughs> Forest awesome. fire. She didn't shit on fire. Yeah. It's always to smash your black love story. Get <laughs> a black love yeah, matters. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, be blessed. <laughs> Get your house in order. I feel like we need to end with a gospel song or something. Send us a voicemail at 508 784 Once again, that's 508 784 Talk to you later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.